Hey everyone, and well, thank you for joining me and uh, for the sponsorship update. Uh, a little disconcerting, I can't see my video. However, I know everyone else can because we've got another screen in the room and they can see me. So I'm gonna do this blind, which is probably good. You don't really want to see yourself on the video anyway. So uh, I see all the numbers are piling up and everyone's jumping in. You're all very good at doing your on-time logins. That's what we like to see. So we'll kick off. Thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, a quick introduction for those that don't know me, and I know many of you do. Um, however, those that don't, I'm Julian Moore, uh, Director of SMS. I work alongside my wife, Belinda, and we have set up the well, Australia's leading consultancy dedicated to the not-for-profit and association sector for a membership and sponsorship. Um, since we started this, it seems that, well, since COVID happened, uh, partnerships are changing. Everything is changing, isn't it? Basically, I, I keep hearing the whole terminology, there's a new norm. Um, well, once it settles down and there is a normal, let me know, because right now it seems to be a weekly change that's going on. Um, I won't go through my background. I, we've done this too many times. Every month uh, I'm going to do these updates and these updates aren't, you know, gospel. What they are, are just what I'm doing with my clients and with my uh, sponsorship consultancy each month. And it's designed to give you that ability to know who's sponsoring who and why. And then that way you can go out and get them to sponsor you too. Um, so what is sponsorship? Sponsorship, let's, I always use this slide at the beginning simply because, well, oh my word, the amount of clients I have that goes, oh, we want to do fundraising. And they're like, well, we really don't do fundraising. Sponsorship is really just a corporate partnership a partnership, a contract between you and the corporate where they'll give you X, which is normally income, and in return, you'll give them X, which is normally access to members. Um, it's about achieving their needs, not so much yours. The partner who comes on board really wants to pay you money so that they get a return on their investment. And right now, we're seeing that become super practical. We're seeing that become the thing that uh, everyone's after is leads. Because of course, without face-to-face, -face, without the ability to send their salespeople out, without the ability to actually send uh, catalogs or proposals out to offices and things, well, no one's there in the offices to read them. So now what we're finding is leads. They want profit, they want leads, they want access, and they need to influence your sector to the point where they want your sector to buy their products and services. So right now, what we do is when we're approaching a partner, we talk to them about leads, access, and influence. They're the key things every single partner is looking for. So the pandemic changes, what has happened? You know this last month rather than the couple of months previously. Well, everyone's still working from home. All the corporates, it doesn't matter who I'm speaking with, whether I'm speaking with superannuation, whether I'm speaking with the banking sector, whether I'm speaking with the agricultural machinery, pharmaceuticals, biomechanicals, whoever it is that I'm working with, whether it's paint manufacturers, whether it's healthcare, all their staff are still at home. So what it's meant is, well, is it harder to access? Bloody hell, is it harder to access? We're really now, the biggest challenge to partnerships isn't actually getting them across the line, isn't actually uh, having the conversation, it's finding who to have that conversation with because so many job losses has meant that so many of these roles are either being split or shared or someone's taking it on new. And now they've never been into the office, they're working from home. So you have no office number. You have their, uh, so everything now is a case of finding out who they are and how they're working and where they're working so that you can contact them 
either via email or on their mobile number. So it's a game of Google. And to find a mobile number is a whole new thing. You know, at the moment, we're doing a huge amount of in-depth searching to try to find that right person. And what it's meant is it's just taking that bit longer to find the right person and have it filter through. It's also meant that Zoom, uh, Microsoft Teams, GoToMeeting, how many of these video services are there? Um, we're now using all of those to have a conversation with them, their team, their management, all in one go. So the actual, I guess, process of them making a decision has been shortened. So let's get it clear. Partnerships are still happening at a slightly reduced rate in some areas and a massively increased rate in others and completely none in others. So we'll go through that in a moment. But what it's meant is the actual decision process from the corporate's point of view has been shortened because, well, we can get everybody into a Zoom meeting that needs to make that decision far quicker than if we actually wanted them to physically be in the room. So now what we're doing is we're, we may be having seven, eight, nine, ten of these Zoom negotiations uh, per day. And we're seeing these happen right across the spectrum. So yes, it's harder to access, but it's harder to access because it's finding that person. That's a challenge. And what it's meant is that slowed things down as engagement, but once you have engaged with them, once you have made contact, and once you have had that first conversation, the second meeting to get everybody involved normally happens maybe the following week, within a few working days. So hang in there. It's definitely worth uh, doing the follow-ups many, many more times on average it's taking eight phone calls just to get through to that person. And that's one call a week, every week for eight weeks is the average to get through to the person, the right person. And then once you are through to them, things really speed up from there on in. And so the trends at the moment we're seeing, and these are just monthly trends. So, you know, things are very variable. Um, selling, it's gone don't sell. There's absolutely no bloody reason for you to sell your organization. Educate them, but educate them not just on your organization, but what you are doing for your members and non-members and stakeholders about servicing them and supporting them through the pandemic. What's your recovery plan for your members? How are you holding their hands? How are you assisting them? That's what sponsors want to know because that's what's relevant right now. If you don't mention COVID in your partnerships at the moment, don't bother, because that's all that matters at the moment. They want to know what you're doing, how you're doing it, who you're doing it for, and what they're getting out of it so that they can piggyback on that to be seen to be the knight in shining armor coming into your industry to save it with some amazing service or product. And so don't sell, become an educator, become a consultant, consult so that that organization, that company know the ins and outs, who's in your industry, what genders, what age groups, what uh, levels of occupation, geographical location, how are you engaging with them? What are you doing for them? How are you doing that for them? Live events are not dead. Please don't think that we don't mention that anymore in every recovery plan, you will still need some element of live events. Now, we've done a huge amount of research in this and we're going to share that very shortly, but uh, you will find that the larger events are gonna come back and come back stronger. You're going to find a change in some of these events so that board meetings may never be the same again. We may be finding people prefer those kind of board meetings, but live events are still happening. Sponsors love those. Partners really want to get involved with those. So don't exclude live events. Tell them what your plans are to actually reestablish those live events and how you're going to reassure your community they can still be involved. Social media is essential. If you haven't got it, get it. 
And if you do have it and don't use it, start. Social media is the fastest access that partners have to communicate out to members, whether it's a closed LinkedIn group, whether it's a your own uh, networking groups on your CRM systems, whether it's uh, Facebook, whatever it may be, get social media and use it. Let the world know what you're doing so that the partners can get involved and they get that bigger access. Lead generation is the main thing. Right at the moment, partners are doing it tough. And the reason they're sponsoring more now than they were a few months ago is simply because they've got a recovery program in mind. And what they want to do is play catch up. They're going to spend their marketing dollars. So we're dealing with the marketing director. We're dealing with the executive. We're dealing with the CEO at this stage. It's nearly always the same, no matter what organization. And all they're trying to do is catch up their lost revenue. So lead generation is key. Uh, we're seeing that the video uh, meetings Groups of 10 are very common. Get ready to present your proposal to many, many people in these group meetings. Um, on average, people like ANZ, for instance, on average have 17 people in the conversation to make one decision. So we're now seeing a huge amount of these uh, kind of uh, group com committee decisions. Video workshops. What workshops are you doing by video? How are you still doing? Will you continue doing them in the future? Because partners being a panelist, partners being engaged, backdrops, videos, hyperlinks, all these are available now where they weren't available before. Before, what we were doing was putting pop-ups in, uh, you know, those pop-up stands with the thing at the back. Well, now we can put video in, we can hyperlink through, we can integrate their website into those workshops. We can use all kinds of uh, online technology to become, to bring your partner into that workshop. And that's proving really, really exciting for sponsors. Mass engagement is what I'm kind of coining the phrase as right now, we're engaging with our members more than ever before because we've had to this is the reason we established it's to actually service and hold their hand through difficult times and doesn't get much more difficult for some than now and what we're seeing is we're engaging with members more and more so if you're not do so and if you don't have the time get optimum contact get a telephone company in to call each and every single one of your members and if you do that the partners will fund this because they want that engagement. So now we're actually seeing partners get behind all kinds of different engagement for your members. And promos, think about what you're doing for these partners. A lot of it's promotion at the moment. It used to be around a, a, a very strategic engagement, but right now we're seeing a lot of, I want promotion to your membership. I want promotion to your database. So make sure you get that alignment right. Um, we know that people uh, like the fizzy drinks, like the Coca-Colas, the Pepsis and Fantas of this world are all out there seeking at the moment. And well, quite honestly, that wouldn't look good if you were an obesity health organization or if you're a sports organization. So make sure you get that alignment right. It's the last thing you want to be known for is during the pandemic, you just went out and took money from anyone. That's, that's super careful right now. So that's enough of the theory. Let's jump into the bit that you're actually here for. So partnerships, who's sponsoring? What have we been up to? It's in June. So the banks, what we're seeing now is the big four are already getting a huge amount of government sway and push to support mortgages. So they're going to really be on the back of this uh, federal push for the construction. So big banks are out there hunting for mortgages. So if you've got uh, members who are families, um, middle-aged onwards, or new home buyers, or whatever segment of your membership might be right for that, that's what the big four are out there for. When you look at the other banks, the likes of HSBC and Rabobank and all the other side of things, 
they're actually out for commercial lending. So you tend to find people like HSBC, Rabo particularly, they're in the agricultural area, they're looking for large scale access to broad scale farmers. Big four are actually after the more general public mortgagee construction loans, very heavily in with the federal government and pushing that criteria at the moment. In agriculture, it's all machinery. John Deere, New Holland, um, Casey, Massey Ferguson, Caterpillar, they're all out there at the moment and all seeking because they're trying to find who's winning the new tenders, who's new, winning the new contracts, who can they get in front of so that all this machinery that's been stockpiling and will actually make it into Australia shortly, they can actually move on. So they have got some real time constraints and they need to be involved as fast as possible. On the telecom side of things, there's only two players and it's Telstra and Optus. Telstra have done something quite funny. Uh, Telstra are after very, very large organizations with big reach. So anything, um, if you've got companies who employ over 500 as members, or if you've got over 5,000 members, Telstra is currently out there seeking. And Telstra are doing that because they're providing or trying to promote their bundles. Don't just go in, we all use mobiles. Everyone uses mobiles. What Telstra wants is bundle sales. So that's broadband, it's uh, the mobile, it's the landline, it's uh, the um, precision ag, whatever it may be, they're trying to bundle things. And they're trying to put that into large scale organizations and large scale membership. Whereas Optus, completely the other way. They're on the 5G bandwagon and they want everyone to start considering if you're building a new home, if you're going camping, if you're moving around and you want that super ultra fast 5G technology, Optus are all over this and that's their big thing. So if you've got a way, if you've got education, if you've got kids, if you've got any of these in your membership and they're all trying to actually show off some science or tech or these types of things that then could be put outside through a 5G network to show its capacity, this is what Optus is looking for. Um, moving on to the trade industries, quite honestly, it's suppliers. The suppliers to your trade industry have always been doing it tough through the entire time. So, but right now everyone can see the light at the end of the tunnel. We know that the active caseload of COVID has gone really low. And now everyone's planning that recovery, just like all the suppliers to the trade industries. They know that the government is pushing. They know that all the banks are pushing. They know that the construction's coming back. So now we're seeing the trade suppliers get their confidence back and they're starting to come out going, how can we get our salespeople involved? How can we get our executive involved? How can we be involved? So I know it's standard fare, but if you haven't spoken with them recently, get back in contact with them. Um, on the tech side of things, Google, Samsung, and all enterprise, when we're looking at tech, they are pouring money in to some of the most exciting things. And we're seeing it all around engagement. So Samsung is video and uh, photos and geolocation. Google, basically, you know, what they're trying to do is create some mass, mass organization where they can engage all these companies in a single go. So, but they're doing it through multi-platform. So whether it's the pixel of their phone, whether it's a laptop, whether it's an iPad, whether it's your car, whether it's your motorcycle, whatever it may be, Google's using multi-platform, but they're all trying to do it at that enterprise level and enterprise 5,000 and above again. Energy suppliers, energy suppliers, oh my word, one of my favorite ones at the moment is energy suppliers. Your Energy Australia, your Origin, your AGL, all of these are becoming super relevant for almost everyone simply because, well, 
thanks to the media going, oh, it's the COVID thing again. And what's a different angle we've never thought about before. We're now seeing news stories come out around, oh, you know, no one's earning money and suddenly the power bills will be a surprise. So we're seeing the power companies want to offset that and go, no, we're, we're here for you. Power companies have had a great time in COVID. Everyone went home, turned the air con or the heating on. So suddenly all the power companies are seeing more and more revenue come through and they're conscious of this and they want to give something back. So if you're a mass manufacturer, if you're manufacturing heavy equipment, if you've got any high levels of power consumption, speak to energy. If you've got homeowners and home users, speak to energy. If you're the environmental organization and you are looking for someone who wants to, you know, powered by and, and you know, Energy Australia, well, those, if you look at AGL, they're already made an announcement. They want to divest themselves of fossil fuels. So suddenly energy is becoming suitable for an alignment with almost any organization. And they're very keen to talk right now. Vitamins, they took a backward step for a while, but suddenly when it comes to complementary healthcare, we're seeing Swiss start to step back in. Blackmores have continued the whole time and Blooms, well, oh my word, are they spending? There's, if you've got everyone spending time at home and no one has gone outside, well, they're vitamin D deficient and Blooms want you to buy their vitamin D. Pharmaceuticals, they still got the same guidelines. Pharmaceuticals have still got this need to educate. They can't promote in Australia, remember. They have to work through their education process. But right now, pharmaceuticals want to get involved because they haven't been able to do their product trials. They haven't been able to do their uh, new drug trials. They haven't been able to travel. It's basically ground to the halt. So what they've done is they've taken all that money they were going to put into those clinical trials and protocols and all the different phasing that to go through and they've shifted that into marketing what they've got and the only way they're allowed to do it is education so current drugs have money right now and if there's something within your industry go to a pharmaceutical to educate your members on what the outcomes are nutrition is booming Everyone went home, and if you're anything like me, we all went home and I went, oh, how can I gain nine kilos super quickly? Um, thank you, Uber Eats, I should be sponsored. But uh, on the other side, the others went home and went, hmm, time to get fit. As you can see, that wasn't my outcome. <laughs> but those of you that did consumed a huge amount of protein and some of the weight loss, so the Hello Fresh the light and easies, those kind of pre-made meals that turn up on your doorstep, protein and you on your nutrition and your weight loss are sponsoring. Get in front of them. They're doing some very, very cool things at the moment. Um, on the tourism side of things, well, tourism was one of the hardest hit uh, industries there were. I mean, convention centers, most are still closed. And those that aren't are still trying to plan their thing. But at the moment, live events, we all have to come back to them at some point. So who benefits from those? Well, tourism bureaus and convention centers and your hotel chains, they will all want to be seeing how can we start filling up our calendars in the future. So it's now time to start approaching your tourism bureaus, your state tourism, your national, your international tourism bureaus to say that you have the capacity to take this number of, of people across there to hold an event with them. They've got money, they need to spend it, let them spend it with you. The hotel chains are very similar. They need the bookings, they need the hotel com nights and they need the convention bookings. Contact them, tell them that you have the opportunity, you have the capacity, don't just book anymore. Make sure you get that partnership first. PPE equipment, your protective equipment, oh my word, Every face mask manufacturer out there is planning on how to buy their next Hawaiian resort. I mean, they've had the best time. So when we're looking at the PPE, these are your fluoros, your 
um, steel toe cap boot manufacturers, your workwear and your face masks, all the way through to the medical side of things. They're having a good time. Speak with them. I know if you speak with people like Totally Workwear at the moment, they're like, yes, we're doing partnerships. How much will it cost us and what do we get for it? That's one of the very first phone calls that you'll take with those sorts of things. Have a look though for some of the bigger ones. Have a look for the ones that's specific to your industry. Food, don't go to Woolworths. They don't, they're not doing anything. Woolworths own or have too much uh, share of too many pubs and clubs and pokey machines and none of them are open. They're hemorrhaging money. The only thing keeping them afloat is the Woolworths. So try not to go there. However, Coles, IGA, Audi, all doing well and all wanting to be seen to be giving something back. So if you're looking for those type of, they're after national though. They're not after your local or state-based, they want national. So keep that in mind if you're going for the food retailers. Online, now, I mean, let's keep in mind the online uh, retail sector has blossomed and it's a coming of age time for them. The biggest one of them, all online shopping is Alibaba. And Alibaba own so many things and spend so much money in so many countries. And to give you an idea, Alibaba spent over 500 million US dollars in partnerships globally last year. And they're promising to spend more this year. So if you've got online shopping, they're very easy to get hold of. I know their head office is in China and I know that that scares people for a range of reasons, not least for translation, they'll answer in English. Give them a phone call, tell them where you're from, tell them your concept, they'll make a decision in about seven days and they'll let you know whether it's a go or no go. Very easy to do business with. eBay, uh, really promoting their new eBay premium service and not everyone's taking it up. And Australia is typically an early adoption country. So they're going to start trialing all kinds of concepts here to see what works before they roll it out internationally. And Wish, how many people have the Wish app and just buy random stuff in the evenings? Wish is doing tremendous business. Online dating. It's been huge for them. Everyone went home and updated their profiles and swiped left or right. I'm not sure which. And with this, RSVP, eHarmony, Hinge, all these organizations who are looking to get hold of the 25 to 35 single females. If you've got those in your organization, go to one of these organizations. Don't go to Tinder. It's a hookup thing. You don't want to be promoting that. Um, however, on these, this single isolation side of things, the um, mental health benefits of under the dating, they're very happy to talk about all that side of things. And social media, well, it's still the Twitter, Facebook um, kind of uh, Instagram show. So go to them, speak to them about the good work you're doing, speak to them about how you're dealing with the mental health space, how you're dealing with social isolation, how their software can assist with all that side of things within your community and let them know. Facebook, once again, don't tend to do the largest of partnerships, but they do millions and millions worth of small ones. Do speak with them. Once again, though, uh, Twitter is only after national. Facebook, don't mind working at state level. So lots of good stuff there. Um, that brings us to the end of the uh, update. So it's shameless plug time. Uh, as you know, as the consultant, this is how we make our money working with just associations. So if you just want me to come in and do a sponsorship health check, review your proposal, help you write a new one, identify who you should approach and what you should approach with and how to price it, we can do that in one day. And that's just called the sponsorship health check. If you want your hand holding and you want a guaranteed income so that I can work with you to de develop your proposal, identify who you should approach, and then help you make phone calls, 
help you do the meetings, hold your hand through the entire process until you achieve that amount of money, then I can do that for you. We've got some dogs that you may have just had. And well, if you're just looking for some new naming rights sponsor for your new, I don't know, destination, let me know, I can assist. Thank you all for taking the time to spend with me this morning. I know you're very, very busy. Don't hesitate to contact me with any questions on my email there or send me a text and we'll organize another one of these Zoom catch-ups where I can actually see you. That would be awesome rather than talking just to this camera. So thank you once again and I look forward to seeing you all next month with a review of what we've been doing this month. Take care. Speak soon.